Hey guys, and welcome to this Friday's Q&A about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Every Friday I answer your questions about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So if you have any questions, just leave me your questions here under this video. Let's jump into the questions for today. Is there a way to save effect settings on presets on the iPad? So very interesting question. I was a little bit confused because you were asking me this question under this video here, how to save audio plugins presets for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So yes, in this video, I talk about audio plugins but not just the audio plugins, you can actually, everything that I teached in this video is about presets in general. So I was confused to answer that question, but I will go over all of the steps again, because maybe you were talking about color effects or something, but let's go into DaVinci Resolve. So if we come in here to DaVinci Resolve and you have effects, right? And you drag and drop your effects to, let's say here, for example, my favorites, multi-band compressor, and I drag this here to my audio track. I can always, oh, I did the limiter instead, but anyway, it's always the same. You have presets here in there. I can create presets by just hitting, like I do all of my settings, right? I change everything and then I can say here plus and I can save this as a new preset. And this works with all kinds of presets. You can always save these settings inside of a preset like that. In this video that I just showed you, I show you even more like how you can save them all at one space and everything. So maybe this wasn't your answer or your question. If you're talking about effects in the color page because if we do this now for example here in the color page and we drag and drop an effect whatever here to our note I have this list and I can't really save my presets or my settings there but the workaround here is you don't save the sing single settings you always save your color grades with power grades or with here if you open the gallery for example if you save something here into power grades you have it in every project like for example I have my HDR iPhone color correction is in here every time I use my HDR video from my iPhone, I can just use that. And so for example, if here's nothing in, I can just simply drag and drop that in. And then also I have my notes and also my settings from that single notes. And then you can copy them from there. So this is the way how you can save them. And the way you can save them is basically you come here to stills and then you say right click, grab still. And then you have your still in here in the gallery. And the, the ones in the stills is only for the project you're working on right now. If you want to save that overall, you have to now drag and drop this into the power grades and then you will have this one settings or saved uh, note tree here in the power grades as well. Can you help me with a video of how to track infusion on the iPad? And when I track, why does my mark always move when I'm when the video is moving? I select an area to track, but the video moves, my marks come out of the object and be tracked and I never get them. So anyway, he's talking about uh, fusion and tracking currently. That can be changed maybe in the new couple of updates or at least when the Fusion page is officially launched. So still the Fusion page, we get them with this hack, but it's not officially there. That's why many things in the Fusion page, they still crash and they don't really properly work. So it could be that maybe on my machine it works and then you follow my tutorial and it doesn't work. This is why I made a video in the past, how to object tracking in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. And you can even attach images and other stuff to that method that I show you here in this video. And this method method is also the, the one method that is actually working currently on the iPad without crashing. So if you want to track something, use this tracking method from the color page and not the fusion page. So I'm sorry to not help you more with the fusion page, but I think we just have to wait until those are fixed because even if it would work now on my M1, it could be on the M2 is crashing or something else is crashing. So. That's my opinion about that. Hi, I need to know if we got some way to use social media icons on DaVinci Resolve for the iPad version or some way to do it or download it or thanks, great video. First, I was confused because I don't really know what exactly you mean with social media icons. Um, I know what social media icons are, but um, maybe it's already so obvious for me, but I will explain you what I do if I just wanna use, for example, a logo like this. I would go into Google and I type in Instagram logo PNG or GIF or whatever, PNG is okay because PNG means you have the background already removed or you remove them yourself in a photo editing software. So I just save that image and I come to my DaVinci Resolve and I can now here import my media from my photos, work straight from the photos. And if it's a real PNG, the background will be removed. So I now can just simply drag and drop, the, drag and drop this here into my timeline. And I have an image with transparent background, the social media icon. So if you just wanna use this here in the, in the end of your video or whatever, in the corner, man. You just wanna use that in the end of the video in a corner or something, just use an image like this and drag and drop that into DaVinci Resolve. So I don't see really a problem. DaVinci doesn't have to give us social media icons. But if you're not talking about animations, okay, I get you. You wanna create some animations, it's flying in or whatever. If it's enough, you could just use 
keyframes. So let's say, for example, I want to animate this Instagram logo here. So let's say this is the end position. So I come in here into the inspector and I say, okay, for the position value, I use this one here and the zoom value or all of them, if you use all of them. And then I go here at the beginning and now I just change my positioning and I place it outside of the screen. This is a simple animation and so it now flies into the screen and you have it like there. If you wanna have more advanced animations, then I would actually recommend that you get a pack from Motion VFX. They make amazing packs for DaVinci Resolve, not just DaVinci Resolve, but they have packs for DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro and everything. And there's one very popular pack, it's called MTuber 3. In this pack, you have a lot of different animations from social media, from the like buttons, and all of those kind of things that will help you if you create YouTube videos like I do. And this also works on the iPad. I have a link here in the description. Also, my channel gets a kickback, but I really think this will save you so much time. There's so many cool things in this pack. I already talked about this in my video here. A couple of days ago, I made this video here. Best plugins for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad you need to know. And I'm talking about Motion BFX in this video, but still, I'm not sure if they still have the summer sale. They had a summer sale at that time when I made this video. Maybe they still have it. Just check out the link in the description. And they have a couple of cool packs that you can use. And why would you use something like that? It now depends on who is watching, right? If you're an older filmmaker, I don't even have to explain that to you. You know that time is money. And everything that you need to put your own time in and you we need weeks to create, those packs come with so many presets, it will speed up your workflow. In the end, you make money if you make your videos. And even if you're a YouTuber, if you can make your YouTube videos faster and get more done and make the next video, that means the next video has the potential to be viral. That will make you money in the end because you get more exposure. So it's all about time. And those packs, they save you a ton of time because you just drag and drop those effects into your timeline and you're done and you don't have to recreate them all of yourself. So Motion VFX is one of the best plugins makers for filmmakers in the industry known by many because they are not only on DaVinci, they have plugins for Final Cut, for Premiere Pro and also DaVinci and they even have an app for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad that makes it easy to install all of those plugins. While the most of the competitors, they don't even have any plugins yet adjusted for the iPad because not everything that works on the desktop is also working on the iPad. You know that because you have Whoop. You know that because you also have an iPad. Last question comes from the German channel and he's basically asking me, he was watching my video about how to use HDR video from my iPhone because when I shoot on my iPhone, it creates HDR videos. But if you drag and drop that into a regular timeline, the Rec 709, it will look garbage. And in this one video that I have here, that one. I created this one video, how to fix iPhone footage in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. In this video, I show you step-by-step step what you have to do so that your footage looks amazing. And now he was asking if I recommend to not even shoot in HDR or if I recommend to do something else with the footage. So it's a good question. I'm not recommending you shouldn't shoot in HDR because maybe you have instances where you wanna use them or reuse your material from the past. You know, I in this video, I recommended that most of the time you will use Rec. 709 because most of the screens that we have still only show Rec. 709. But if you have an iPhone or an iPad that can show HDR videos, you can also upload to YouTube in HDR and you could make that your thing, right? On your YouTube channel. Or maybe you work with a client and you wanna use HDR videos. So, I wouldn't say I, yes or no. It always depends on what you want with your material or your clients want, right? So I, I personally, I shoot in HDR with my iPhone and I bring it in and I prepared a preset, which I already talked about in this video. I have a preset that I just drag and drop onto my footage and then I'm done. So it's not much more work for me. Or let's say if you're working all the time in HDR videos, you can change your timeline setting. I just show you where this works. So if you come, for example, here to your project settings and here under color management, you will find the different timeline color spaces. For me, and maybe for you as well, it's Rec. 709 and I recommend that because this is the most common use. This is the most devices can use this. But if you know you wanna create a video in HDR, an output video from your DaVinci, you can also change that here. The same thing that I teach in this video where how to fix it, you could also change just the color space to whatever you're shooting here and then you wouldn't have those problems. Yeah, that's the other solution. Anyway guys, that's it for this week's Q&A Friday for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. I hope this was helpful and you learned something. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bam bang gong. If you have any questions about DaVinci Resolve, let me know them in the comments and we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel. I wish you an amazing weekend. Bye.